Hey guys, I'm Gary Vaynerchuk. I have been an innovator and a pioneer in the wine business from launching one of the first e-commerce wine businesses to building one of the largest stores in the country to becoming one of the first personalities. What I really care about though is getting people to try different wines because this beverage is the most fascinating, is the most complex, is the most ever-changing, and is the most fun. Let's talk about evaluating wine. I'm gonna teach you how to evaluate wine, but I don't want you to become too much of a wine snob or take it too seriously. To take wine too serious defeats the point of all the pleasures that wine actually brings. Yes, there's a ton to learn. Everybody's always learning about wine forever, but the reality of the situation is this. Wine is something that we need to enjoy, and evaluating it is part of the process of really getting to know it, and really, ultimately, allowing you to navigate through the wine world and find the best deals, find the best values. Learning about wine really becomes a money saver and becomes a journey kind of play more than anything else. So what do you want to do when you evaluate wine? Things that you want to break down into is looking at it, smelling it, and tasting it. Much like we do with food or anything else, that's how we roll, but we probably don't think about it. With wine, it gets a little technical into these three categories. Let's start saying the thing that I really like to do a lot is really look at the wine. You know, you're looking at it, you're looking at the color, but as you continue to go down the path, you start seeing what's a little bit more golden, what's a little bit more faint in red wines, is it dark or is it ruby? What's going on around the edges? The visual is a fun way to kind of get into the mindset of about tasting the wine. Now, what we're going into next, after you kind of give it a good solid look is probably the thing I care about the most. More than actually drinking it. Because I, I'm a kind of guy that really loves the anticipation. In the wine world, the buildup is the sniffy sniff, AKA smelling the wine. Now here's what you wanna do. You've seen this a million times. People tend to swirl, which is, the reason we like to swirl is we like to get oxygen in here to break up the wine and let all the nose and the flavors kinda come to the surface. Oxygen is your friend, kids. Say it with me, oxygen is your friends. So oxygen is breaking down the acidity in a white wine and the tannins in a red wine, letting the flavors come and surface to the top. Now here's what you wanna do. You need to get your entire schnoz in there if you really wanna win. Like this, I, may, I wanna make sure you guys are getting this. I'm talking full contact glass, I even got some on my lip. Full contact and real inhales. <laughs> and then you swirl a little bit more. What you're doing there is a couple things. One, you're picking up on flavors, it's priming your palate, you start to salivate a little bit, and really what it's doing is really opening up the opportunity for you to taste the wine even better. The nose, the sniffy sniff, is a key component. If you take anything out of this class, anything, I can guarantee that the value that you paid for it will come in the form of you taking the smelling of wine dramatically more serious than the market does today. It will make your drinking wine experience a hell of a lot better. It will absolutely allow you to taste more and all those funky notes you hear like strawberries and and chalk and things of that nature become more obvious on your palate because you've primed your nose. Now, first I like to taste the wine straight the way all of us would drink wine. Just drink it. Cool, we all do that. It's how we work as humans. But if you really wanna get into evaluating wine, tasting a wine, what you really wanna look for is finding all the flavors that you can around your palate. The way to do that is to swish it in your mouth almost like a Listerine-like environment. Spit bucket. And so, what happens is, it's incredible to me, and I'm hoping that you're tasting along right now, how different the wine tastes when you go straight versus, and we all saw this in sixth grade health class where they had the tongue and they split up the tongue and there's all different parts of it. In the back of my palate, I'm tasting a lot more acidity. In the middle of my tongue, I'm tasting a lot more apple. At the tip, I'm getting a little bit more of that chalkiness, a little bit of that sugar. So your tongue is, picking up on different parts of the wine. And one of the great things to do for a lot of my friends when they'll call me or text me like I hate my wine, I'm like swish it, see if you like it better. They either like it better or they like it less, but it teaches them that there's an alternative. And here's some good news, the way to become a great taster is to test (laughs) and taste and try more wines. So the process is a hell of a lot of fun as well. So again, to recap it, you've got a very hardcore visual aspect, but Let's be honest, that's a little bit of a nerdy kind of thing. It's kind of just fun to like build up the anticipation. The sniffy sniff, key. 
the underrated aspect of tasting and evaluating wines in the world. There's people that, I mean, I've gotten to a place in my career that to where when I smell a wine without knowing what it is, half the time, 20%, 20 to 50% of the time, I know what the wine is just on smell. That's how big importance it was for me and I think for anybody that's taking wine serious. And then finally, thinking about, almost like exercising, when you're tasting and making sure the wine is hitting all of your palate, all of your tongue, your entire mouth, to open up all the flavors that a wine has to offer. Let's do a little like terminology 101 just for kicks and giggles. You know, just not sure where everybody is. Vintage, if you don't know, is the year a wine is made. So this is 2013, that's the vintage. As you progress in your wine drinking journey, things like acidity and tannin will become more obvious to you. You'll start tasting them. You, you know, the acidity's not super complicated. When you drink a seltzer, uh, you know, you, you're tasting that, that sharpness, right? You're getting that fizz. You know, acidity has that kind of dynamic on your palate. Uh, and then the tannin structure is that bitterness that so many of you struggle with in red wine. That eventually becomes something you like. Palettes evolve, and if you're just starting out in wine, recognize this, you'll be able to get through and you'll be looking forward to the acidity and the tannins. Minerality is another thing that I think you need to start establishing an understanding for or try to discover. Minerality is a core component flavor profile in wines, and it really comes down to the best common terminology is really the way rocks soil taste, soil a little bit in, in the red wines, but rocks, really truly chalk and rocks and things of that nature. So. If you're, if you're ambitious, uh, if you're an explorer, I really do think licking rocks, I mean it, or chiseling down a rock and eating a little rock dust is a very good thing for your palate because you can start picking it up on wines and it is a core foundational thing you'll start referencing and start looking for if you like the kind of wines that I like uh, in wines. You're gonna hear it a million times. Oak really breaks down into wood. I think it is in your best interest to go outside if you live in a suburb and look at a tree, take off a little piece and bite it. I'm not kidding, if you've not bit wood, if you've not licked a tree, you are not gonna be able to pick up on the oak flavors that are the backbone of wine. Wine is very often stored in oak casks, for sometimes red wines for a couple of years, and it starts extracting the nuances of that. And the reason so many Americans love Cabernet and Chardonnay is because of oak. It's giving that smokiness, it's giving that kind of creaminess that you see in wine. And I'm gonna to talk to you about structure and finish in wines. These are terms you're gonna hear over and over as you explore your journey in the wine world. The structure is the way a winemaker puts together a wine. And so for me, structure is imperative. For you to like evaluate structure takes time, it's context. Did it have a lot of nice fruit in the beginning to welcome me to the wine? Did I taste anything in the middle? It cut what we call a mid palate, and then how does it finish? What's the last thing I, I taste? Did anything outbalance each other? Is the fruit balanced with the tannins, or is the fruit balanced with the acidity in a white wine? Does, because if the tannins are too bitter, then I'm not gonna like it, then you're not definitely not gonna like it. Is the acidity too much? Is the alcohol out of whack, which then makes it hot, and then I feel I'm taking like a shot of bourbon with a little bit of grapes on top of it. These are the things we're looking for in that complete package. That is what structure is. Finish, a term that you'll hear a ton from a sommelier or your wine nerd friends. Finish is kind of the last thing you're tasting, and how long do you taste it? There are many wines that you can taste, and not this one, but there's many wines that you can taste literally that quickly where I said, and not this one, that you've stopped tasting it. That's it, like, it's gone. You tasted it while it was there, but think of it as almost like water, like you're just not tasting that much anymore. The more you, you can still taste that wine on your tongue, on your palate, the longer finish it has. And so, the reason I'm kind of pausing and looking, I'm kind of stunned this $13 wine has this long of a finish, speaks to a good quality wine, maybe a value in itself. So. A finish really is that last lingering flavor you get out of wine and how long you taste it. And was it smooth or was it bitter? Very, very important. The finish is a massively important thing for you to pay attention to. And a thing early on, even if you're beginning stages, probably the thing that most people can articulate uh, in their wine journey. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this video, Feel free to like and subscribe to stay up to date on all of our latest videos.